topic for this track is Hack Your Way to a Degree, a New Direction in Teaching Application Security at Universities. So thank you everyone for uh, being here today. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to also thank Adobe and the rest of the sponsors for supporting OWASP's OWASP mission. This is so important for us. So today we're going to talk about teaching application security, not to developers, but to future developers. That means students that are becoming and learning how to become a developer or a security consultant or a DevOps or whatever. So uh, some things about myself. Uh, I've, I have quite a few years of experience in information security. I started off in the research and academic field doing a PhD. That was like uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, I ended up in the industry doing uh, penetration testing, offering information security consultants, uh, consultancy services to large corporations in Greece, Balkans, and the Middle East. That's what I do right now. That's what pays the bills. But at the same time, I still have a strong interest in uh, the academic community, in the research community, and in teaching students about application and information security. So as a volunteer, I teach at a couple of universities in Greece. I have taught in both undergraduate and postgraduate students. It has been, and it is quite an experience. It's very refreshing to see the new generation eager to learn new things. And uh, at the same time, I'm quite heavily involved with OWASP. I've been with OWASP since 2005, being the Greek chapter leader. And uh, for the last couple of years, we have been uh, working on the OWASP Academic Challenges Project, which is what I will be talking about in this presentation. So I'm going to share with you today our experience on teaching application security to youngsters, to young students. It's uh, not quite the same as teaching application security to professionals. It's quite different. It has some specific challenges. We are facing some uh, particular problems every day. And uh, we have uh, built an ecosystem in Greece, and we're building this ecosystem on a worldwide level to uh, advance teaching application security at universities. So right now in Greece, we have four OWASP academic supporters. So four Greek universities are academic supporters of OWASP, which means that they're using OWASP material to teach application security. And um, most of them, as you will see, also use our project academic challenges. So uh, this is our real experience on using such projects to teach application security. So, uh, when you have students in front of you, you are faced with some serious challenges. So as, you will, as I will say in, in the next few slides, we have classes in Greece that have more than 300 students. So you walk, well, you got, you walk up one day in a class and you see 300 students in front of you. Uh, this can be quite challenging because not all of these students want to learn information security. Some of them just want to pass the class, just want to get a passing grade. Some of them want, are geeks, and they want to learn all the bits and bytes. Some of them even want to cheat to pass the class, so they don't care to hear about information security. They just want to copy what the guy next, in the next desk is doing. And uh, so you have some, some of these unique problems. At the same time, most of us have been a student one way or another. And uh, the fact is that as university teachers, we know how to make good developers. We know how to teach how to develop software in a really awesome way. So in all universities, not only in Greece, but worldwide, we are making some top class developers that can build pretty much everything you want. And we're seeing this every day. But at the same time, and this was one of the issues I had when I was a student myself, no one teaches you how to build this software in a secure way. We're not getting taught about secure development. We're getting taught about development only. So I realized that when I was a student. And now I have this unique chance to try and change it. And that's what we're trying to do with the Academic Challenges project. So the Academic Challenges started like two years ago. And uh, I'd like to share with you the, the history of the project. Uh, as I think it is very important to understand the challenges that we faced and what problems we had to solve and what brought us to build this project. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to my colleagues in a virtual way. So this is Vasilis and Alex. They're both professors at the local Greek university. Uh, Vasilis was appointed to his position 
two years ago, and the first day he got into the class, he had 350 students in front of him, and he had to teach information security to them. So as you can imagine, it was chaos. I mean, students were talking uh, between them. No one had uh, any willingness to attend class. And every single student was so tired of PowerPoint presentations. They were also used to having slides filled with text, uh, having to read textbooks for the exams, and having to answer boring questions about information application security. As I told you before, most of the students just want a passing grade. There are very few students that are willing to learn. And all students have varying backgrounds. So some of them are hearing for the first time about application development, information security. Some of them were really geeky teenagers. So they know what they're doing. And uh, they will know most of the stuff that the teachers will tell them. So they want, they're looking for this extra bit. Uh, in any case, Basilis and Alex have to make their course interesting for every single student. Otherwise, it's going to be hell. They're going to lose their sanity because it's going to be chaos in the classroom and in the auditorium. So there, is, there are some challenges that we're facing to teach all these students of the varying background. And we all know that university courses are way too theoretical. There are no practical exercises. There are very seldom, in very seldom cases, we have some practical exercises. And uh, as far as I can remember, and as, as far as I know, if you ask every student who wants to have a pen test lab, a hacking lab. So I was asking my teachers to build a pen test lab so that I can test my skills and see how penetration testing feels like. And uh, now that I'm teaching, I can understand their uh, frustration and the difficulty of this. It's hard to build a pen testing lab, let's face it, and uh, more specifically a pen testing lab that students get engaged with. So yeah, labs can be cool, but they're hard to, man to maintain. They require uh, hardware and software, so we need uh, funds. Uh, if you look out on the web, you will find several vulnerable applications. WebGoat is one of them. And uh, so you will ask, why make a new vulnerable application project? The fact is that when we started planning for the courses, we overviewed all these existing vulnerable applications. And most of them are focused on a self-learning mode. So they're very helpful if you want to sit on your computer and learn about application security without having anyone teaching you. But they're not designed to be used in a class environment or in a lab environment. They're not designed to facilitate the teacher or the professor that wants to teach application security in a practical way. At the same time, since we remember we have 300 students, we want to get them engaged. We want to promote interaction between them. We want them to make questions, to be excited about security. So these tools don't really help. And most importantly, we felt that we need to introduce the attacker's perspective into education. So universities tend to be really politically correct on this field. Uh, they don't want to hear about hacking or uh, black hats or white hats. They, they want to be really politically correct. But we all know that in order to understand and learn application security in the best possible way, you need to know how an attacker thinks. So we build our modules in such a way that, first of all, we teach ethics to students. So what's ethical and what's not ethical, what you should do and what you should not do. And then we show them through practical examples how the attackers work so that they know how to best defend their applications. So that these are pretty much the challenges that we faced when we started teaching application security. And with a bit of luck, we found some colleagues that were also interested in this field. And they were, at that time, researchers of information security. So this is Andreas and Anastasis, they were doing, and they're still doing research in application security. They're AppSec enthusiasts, actually. And they also have a very good uh, feeling and idea and sense of volunteerism in helping to get the word out and spread security awareness. So what they had done is, is that they had built those challenges. They were rather simple challenges, but they had an educational uh, background on them. So their, their purpose was to rather teach application security rather than build 
just another vulnerable application. So they built this tool that, was, that had interesting, realistic challenges. And they wanted to use this tool to teach students and youngsters about application security. So we met them at, uh, at a conference, actually. And we sat together. And this is what made the academic challenges. So that was the creation of the academic challenges. Um, Vasilis started using it right away at the university. And uh, let me tell you, it was a huge success. And uh, it was not long before the project really took off. And uh, more challenges were added. The project expanded very rapidly. Other universities started using it. And we started having uh, interest for practically from all over the world. Uh, at that time, we attended the OWASP summit. That was early 2011. We presented the project at the summit. And uh, there were quite a few uh, professors at the summit who, who were really interested in the project. So it was at that, at that time that it became an actual OWASP project. Um, so what, is the, what are the academic challenges? Originally, they were based on a Joomla front end. So you had to have Joomla installed in the web server with a database before, um, behind. And uh, originally, we had 10 web application security challenges. They started off as a simple challenges. That you didn't have to do anything, just pay attention in the source code and the, the HTML documents. Just have your eyes open and see bits and pieces. And they scaled up to intermediate and a bit more difficult uh, exercises. Topics vary from information gathering to XSS, SQL injection, and coding issues, stuff like that. And uh, as time goes by, we keep, we keep adding more challenges. So now we have even crypto challenges. We have SQL injection. And we have also built entire virtual machines that the student can download. And uh, that has to go through various steps to, to solve challenges in that virtual machine. So, the project has expanded a lot, not only in Greece. Right now in Greece, there are approximately 10 universities that use it all over the place, but also worldwide. Uh, and that was what really amazed us. We had interest from all over the world, like uh, Israel, Indonesia, uh, USA. We had uh, New, York, New Jersey uh, University being very interested in actually doing some work on the academic challenges, producing new challenges interest from Brazil. So we have now built what we call an ecosystem of universities that see a need for a different paradigm in teaching application security. They have been using the academic challenges successfully. And uh, we're working together to move the project forward and change how application security is taught at universities. So a bit more information about the project. As I, as I said, it's, uh, there are relatively simple challenges. We're not, we don't want to make things difficult. Remember, they're just students. Uh, mainly web-based challenges because it's easier to implement. Uh, languages that we use are, is mainly PHP, but also some JavaScript. We also have some security misconfiguration issues so that students can understand the entire picture. Uh, our goal is to present the general idea behind the vulnerabilities rather than have something really complex that will make the life of the students difficult. We want to cover a wide aspect of vulnerabilities rather than go too deep into one of them. And uh, even though some of them will seem rather easy to you, uh, we all know that the, such vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting still exist and are prevalent out there. So when we are building the challenges, as I said, it's not yet another vulnerable application. We have to keep some things in mind because these challenges are used in a university environment. And we also mark the students according to the, their skills and how they solve these challenges. So when you have to mark students, you have to be objective. Otherwise, students will come back to you and say, why did I get A and he got B? Because I solved most exercises and the other guy didn't. You have stuff like that to, to face. So one of the important things was that each challenge has to have a unique solution. They, we, didn't, we could not have two different ways leading to a solution or even two different solutions because this would create confusion to the students. So the solution should be single and deterministic. There should be a, a path that the student has to follow to reach to the conclusion. There, we do not want to have 
uh, bypasses. We do not want to have students to be able to cheat. So we, these are some challenges that we have to face. And also to make things interesting, all challenges must have a scenario, a myth, a story that will trigger the interest of the students and make them want to get involved. Finally, the difficulty of the exercises should escalate. So we should start with simple exercises so that students uh, find it relatively easy to get involved and keep their interest going. But then we should also have some more difficult exercises because, again, we need to mark students. So this is not a binary marking system. You solved the challenge, you didn't solve it. In Greece, we have marks from 1 to 10. So we have to mark students from 1 to 10. So we need to have different level of exercises so that the best students get a 10, the not so good students get a 7 or an 8, and some students get just a passing grade. So this, uh, we implemented the academic challenges. We use them in the, in the real classroom environment. And uh, to our surprise, the reaction of the student was phenomenal. They were really amazed by this project. Uh, they were really excited that they were actually having some hands-on experience with information application security. It was a first time thing for them. So after all, it, it worked. Uh, when students come up to class, they expect to have a traditional theoretical PowerPoint presentation about information security. On the other hand, what we presented them right from the first day was the academic challenges. So they had their web page that had some issues, that had the story behind it. They had to read the story and then solve the challenge. So for a minute or two, they had to think like an attacker. They had to think like a hacker. So uh, originally, we introduced challenges one at a time. So for the first week, students had to solve one challenge, and then for the second week, the second challenge, and so on. And we found out that most students solved the first challenge and went on to the second one and the third one straight away without waiting our instructions. So it means that they, they really liked it. And uh, even more importantly, uh, this whole thing generated discussion among students and really good interaction during class time. So we had uh, students getting involved, asking questions, uh, talking about the vulnerabilities in to more extent, talking about how we can secure the application or, or what, the prob what was the problem that created this vulnerability, and really good interaction and engagement. Uh, but we also wanted to measure this in a more practical way. So we uh, distributed questionnaires to the students, asked them approximately 25 questions that had to do, first of all, with their skills and level of knowledge to see if they knew about security or if they didn't know and how many of them knew about it. And also the feedback on using and their experience with the challenges. Up until now, approximately 500 students have replied to these questionnaires. And we have made some statistical analysis that I will show you right after. And uh, we're now trying to figure out an automated way to get feedback on these questionnaires, not only on the, uh, from Greece, but on a global level. So uh, more than half of the students, and approximately 85%, found the use of the challenges and the whole experience very extremely useful. Uh, there were very few students that felt like they didn't need this or the uh, it was more of a hassle for them. So students were definitely excited about it. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the level of knowledge of most students were not significantly uh, high. Most students had an average level of knowledge, not only about security, but also uh, about IT. So even though it was something new for them, they didn't find it was really difficult, it got them excited, and they found it really useful. Uh, so as you can see, the level of specific knowledge in terms of programming or administration was pretty much average for all students. So this uh, last couple of months, actually three or four months, we have had the chance to have some improvements in the project. And this was because the project participated in the Google Summer of Code this year. So uh, the Google Summer of Code is a program that supports open source software by actually paying students to do some real work, some coding work on open source projects. So for the first time this year, OWAS participated as an organization in the Google Summer of Code. And the academic challenges had the honor to be one of the projects that a slot was assigned to. So initially, we had uh, 16 amazing proposals. So 16 students from all over the world 
uh, made a proposal to work on the academic challenges. This was quite honoring for us. And at the same time, it was really difficult to choose the project that would go on. Uh, most of the projects were focused on two different areas, building new challenges and building a new interface. After a lot of thinking, we decided to go ahead with the new interface as we thought that we should first build the design and the interface and then add new challenges to the project. The reason behind this is that even though we had many requests for new challenges, so we had people emailing us that we have a new challenge for your project, can you add it? And so we found it difficult to integrate new challenges and to automate this procedure. So we decided to build the interface first so that we will be able to more easily integrate new challenges. So, uh, What we ended up having is a totally new interface uh, which focused on not only the usability and the ease of usage by the teacher and the student, but also on the automation of importing new challenges. So we're now at version 0 0.3, which has an entirely new interface. So it's not Joomla based anymore. It's a custom interface. Uh, it also has an installer so that people can more easily install the academic challenges. Another issue that we were facing because if another teacher wanted to install it, he had to install Joomla. He had to, do, to run some customized scripts. We were having questions like, how do I harden this? What are the problems? So we wanted to get away with all these uh, uh, things and have a really simple installation procedure. So now we have an installer. It completely automates the installation as you will see. And uh, the only prerequisite is that you have a, practically a web server that can run PHP and a database, for example, MySQL. So any XAM, LAMP installation is more than enough. And we have a brand new interface that looks really nice. The student did, did some really nice work in there. And of course, some new features that are targeted mostly to teachers or professors. So a teacher can now create new classes, add students to the class, uh, assign challenges to the class so he can assign challenges one at a time and see how the students progress. Uh, he can monitor the progress of the class, how the students uh, solve the challenges, which students have solved them, which haven't, and so on. And also add some announcements and articles because remember we want to build an entire ecosystem and not just a vulnerable application. So it's a complete, uh, let's say, e-learning environment that has to do with application security. Uh, one of the most significant features that we have added is the possibility to automatically add new challenges. So we thought of a workflow to facilitate this. So if a, a teacher wants to add a new challenge, maybe he has built a new challenge or some of his students have built a new challenge because this happens as well, he can very easily upload it to the interface as a zip file. The challenge is automatically extracted to the correct directory and then an administrator has to log in, go through the challenge, see that it has all the prerequisites, that it actually works, it has a solution, it has a valid path, and so on. And then when he makes all these checks, he makes the challenge publicly available so that all other teachers can also use this challenge. So the only thing you have to do is just put the PHP files or the JavaScript files in a zip file, add an XML file to this uh, uh, archive, which has, for example, metadata such as the title of the challenge, the authors of the challenge, how difficult it is, how much time you expect the student needs to solve it, and so on. And then you just upload it to the interface, and it's all there. So uh, I have set up the academic challenges on my laptop so that you can have a glimpse of the interface. If you just give me a minute to bring up my web browser. So this is practically the main screen that you get when you uh, point your browser to the URL of the challenges. Uh, usually you see a number of articles or they can be announcements from teachers that grades are out or there's a new challenge, you can try it out or you have to complete all these challenges by then and so on. And of course you have a login prompt. Uh, if a student logs in, sorry. he will get to see a list of the challenges 
that are available to him. So the teacher has assigned these specific challenges to the class that the student belongs to. So the student can see these challenges. Um, he can see a report of his progress. So what challenges he has attempted, which ones have been successfully solved, when, which ones have not been successfully solved until now, and which challenges have not been attempted at all. He can also see, or she can also see the ranking, both overall, so in regards with all this, the users that are registered in the system, and also in his specific class. He can see where he's standing. Uh, so if you want to take a glimpse of the ch some challenges, for example, the first challenge is more or less the most simple one. What it says, so as I said, there is a scenario, a story behind it. In this case, it says that our agents have informed us that there is a suspicion that the site of a logistics company is actually a human organ smuggling organization. So there you go, you have a myth, uh, which sounds exciting. And uh, this organization attracts victims through advertisements for jobs with high salaries. So they're advertising jobs for high salaries. You click on the advertisement and you go to this site. And uh, then the uh, potential employees are registered in the system, in the secret files, as special clients. And we have a secret agent in there that was, has been hired by the particular company, but he has gone missing since January 1st, 2007. We know that the agent is still alive, but we cannot contact him. So the last time he communicated with us, he mentioned that uh, we could contact, contact him on an email address that the company has supplied him. But uh, he didn't tell the, what the email address was. Uh, so he gave us, however, a hint that uh, he was hired on the Friday 13th. So you get a story, the student gets a story and gets some hints on how to solve the, the challenge. So what you have to do, so there is a clear purpose in this, you have to find his email address and send it to it by email. So you just hit try it and another window pops up eventually, which is the actual challenge. So in this case, you will see just a prompt asking for username and password when my laptop picks up. This is all PHP, by the way. It's very simple code. So you get the site of the logistics company, and you need to enter a code and password to log into the site. So you have to find out what this code and password is. So uh, the first thing that you would do is like look at the source code behind the, the web page. So if you do that, <coughs> new page source, you start browsing through the source code. By the way, this is not evident to the students right from the first time. It, again, these are students that maybe they see uh, security for the first time. So uh, usually we let the students work on the challenge for like 10 minutes or so and then have them ask questions and what they have done. So you get to see the source code and then you start looking through the code and you will see that in some place there is white rabbit, which by the way, is colored white. So you cannot see it from the page. You have to either look at the, the code or just go like this and you will see white rabbit coming up right there because it's colored white. So what do you think is let's, let's try white rabbit as a code. So you enter white. Rabbit, and then you'll find out that the system actually logs you in. Oh, my lap is being really slow. So after you log in, you get a different interface that actually lets you uh, send emails, for example. And again, you have to do some information gathering to find out what the right email is. So here you go. You have some the main page of the company, some links that are actually pointless on the left, it's just uh, honeypots to make things more complicated a bit. You have a send email functionality, which you have to use as a student to send the email to the correct address, and if you do so, you have completed the challenge. 
And then you have to actually find out what you have to do. So supposedly the student just moves around the interface and then he has to uh, notice that this icon, for example, is located in a secret area. So as you can see in the URL, there is a secret area on the side. If you go to that directory, you will see that there is a file, a txt file, that has email addresses. And so you have a, a bunch of email addresses. And then you have to remember the hint. The hint was that the guy was hired on the Friday 13th. So you have to look for the email that looks like Friday 13th. So there's the one. And if you go and send an email at this address, the, um, uh, the challenge will be successfully completed. So we go back. Send an email. And the system will tell you that you have successfully completed the challenge. So you, a student can always go back and solve the challenge again and again either to improve his score or just to try out different things. So you send the email and congratulations, you've solved the challenge. So this is the most simple one. There are other challenges like cross-site scripting, uh, challenges that have to do with encoding and decoding things, looking through the code, understand how it works, and so on. But you see, the concept is the same. There is a story, there are some hints, and uh, it sounds realistic, and the students get engaged. Uh, apart from that, there is the, um, the administrator interface, which is also interesting. So you log off as a student and log in as an administrator. I have a question from the student perspective. Sure, yeah. Can the teacher see how long a student spends in a particular module? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're working on right now. So I'm gonna, if you can wait for a couple of minutes, I'm gonna explain a bit more. Uh, we want to improve our scoring system and take into account how long, a student, how long it took a student to solve the challenge. So we will be adding this functionality really soon. So uh, an administrator has functionality that has to do with adding new articles to the front page, uh, announcements and so on, managing users and classes so he can see uh, how many users are registered on the system, assign them to a specific class, see how many classes are assigned to him. He can also archive a class, so a class is usually valid only for one semester. Once the semester is over, you want to get rid of it, but not delete it. So we have an archiving functionality. And he can also see the challenges that are available to him, assign challenges to uh, classes, or even add new challenges, which, as I said, is really simple. Uh, you can either upload directly a challenge. So in this case, you go ahead and add and upload a zip file, and everything is done automatically. Or um, type metadata uh, manually. So this can be a new challenge. The author is Costas. Category is web. The level can be, uh, for example, one, two, three, or high, low, medium. Uh, the expected duration in minutes that the student needs to solve it, like 10 minutes. You can also add a, a description. Usually this is the story behind the challenge. And then you eventually you need to go ahead and upload the, the actual code. So I have an example challenge that we can use. And, uh, there you are. So it's just a zip file that has all the PHP file code files. You can actually see it. So there's just, in this case, it's just one PHP file and an XML file that has the metadata. So now we have added the challenge. You can see it right there. And uh, an administrator has to actually go through and verify it before it becomes available to 
uh, all other teachers. Uh, apart from that, we have also built an installer, which is this one. So what you do is download the zip file of all the code that comprises the academic challenges. You just uh, unzip it to, your, uh, to a folder in your web server. And the first page you get is this one. So you choose a language. Right now, English is the only available languages. We will be having it in Greece, of course, really soon, in Greek. Uh, you enter some administrator details, like your email, admin. The administrator username will be used to log into the interface as an administrator. Database settings, so you need to enter in a database name, uh, database user, and the system needs to log on the database and do some queries, so in this case it's root. Database password, where the database is located, local host is another host, and then just press go. Queries are executed. If there is any error, you will see it here. You move on. You just add the title to the application. You specify the exact path in the web server. Next, and you're done. So you can then go ahead and access the application from the URL. It's there. So it's relatively simple and easy to install it. We also intend to build a virtual machine that has everything ready. Uh, we're working on it uh, right now as well. Uh, so let's uh, so one of uh, speaking of virtual machines, one of the projects that we currently worked on was like more more of a fun project. It was a hack academic P project. So we have we had bought a Raspberry P device. I guess you all know what it says. And we thought, why not just try and install Hackademic Challenges on it and see how fast it goes and how, what's the response time. The idea is to have a really simple device that you can use to implement the Hackademic Challenges on an ad hoc basis. So we, uh, we bought a USB Wi-Fi dongle. We just put it in the Raspberry Pi we, uh, and set it in an access point mode. Installed Apache, PHP, MySQL, Hackademic Challenges on top of that. So right now we have a device that you can plug it in wherever you are. And it's an access point. User can, users can log in the access to the access point and start playing with the academic challenges straight away. So you have a CDF challenge in a box. Uh, some interesting points that we found out that uh, approximately three gigs were needed. So you need a four gig card to make it happen. OK, it's kind of slow for a uh, production use. Uh, the, the Raspberry Pi is not so strong, so if there are like five or six users trying challenges at the same time, it will be slow. But anyway, it's pretty cool for a proof of concept thing. Anyway, uh, as a conclusion, uh, we are already working, keep working on the academic challenges. Right now, we're working on hardening the entire system, and we're using ISAPI to do this. So as I said, we had a lot of work being done uh, during the Google Summer of Code, uh, but there were some security holes eventually, and we need to improve the security of the system. We're also working on the documentation uh, to make, we, we had a teacher's guide for the previous version, now we had to build a new teacher's guide for the new version as new functionality has been added. And uh, we expect to release a stable version and achieve beta status as a NOAA's project by the end of the year, and also release a hardened VM version so a professor or a teacher can download uh, VM and install it right off. And uh, after that, we are uh, willing to work on a more complex scoring system. As I said, in an academic environment, uh, the scoring is not binary. It's not you solved it, you didn't solve it. You need to have various levels. So we are thinking of taking into account various aspects of solving a challenge. For example, time required to solve the challenge, how much time it took a student to solve it. Uh, also add some... Um, uh, some steps on the challenge. So if a student solves one step, he gets like five points. If he solves two steps, ten points, and so on. So that we can measure how good a student is. Uh, take into account the difficulty of the exercise, and so on. We, we have some really interesting thoughts on building a new scoring system. And we would also like to introduce multiple solutions. We have done a lot of discussions about this. For example, we have some XSS challenges, and we all know that there are various different ways to exploit access vulnerabilities. Right now, we only accept one alternative. 
but we had students coming up and say, normally this should be working, and yeah, it should be working, but it, it's not working with the academic challenge. So we want to introduce alternative solutions so that uh, students can try different things. And we, in, in this way, we can also eliminate cheating. So if one student solves a challenge, it's very easy to tell the students standing next to him, this is the solution, go ahead and solve it. But these are various solutions, maybe randomized solutions. It will be a bit harder to, to cheat. So by concluding this, I'd like to thank my colleagues. They have all been putting a lot of work into the academic challenges, each one from his own perspective. And uh, thank you for uh, being here, and, uh, for hearing this. By the way, uh, starting at 2 p.m., I will be upstairs on the 17th floor on the Open Source Showcase. I will have, I have my uh, academic P with me, it will be on, and you can log in and try some of the challenges yourself, see how it goes, and get familiarized with the interface. So you're all more than, more than welcome to join me upstairs and uh, talk more about our project. So thank you very much. <laughs>